Hello, everyone. I'm Sally Kleinfeld uh, with, from Jazz Carta, and I am here with... Gita Stevens, founder of Coif. Thanks, uh, Sam. And we're we're here going to have a, a short conversation about Quave. So, uh, so you know, why don't you kick it off with uh, just a little bit of information about Quave? Who for people who are unfamiliar with it, for for people who haven't heard of it before, what is Quave? Yeah, yeah, we've been going for a long time now, but yeah, I hope there's still people new uh, to Quave that are listening and watching this. Yeah, so Quave is a it's a knowledge sharing platform and a community platform that we built on top of Plum. So one, you know, I used to refer to that as social internet, but I found that people have really like old fashioned associations with the word internet. So it's not that, it's not that stale box in the corner. It's far more sexy than that. So think of it as a community platform that enables knowledge sharing within a company or within a wider community. Cool, and, and you mentioned that it was, it's been around for a while. So uh, can you just tell a little bit more about that? How did it get started? Who started it? When was that? Yeah, I used to go to Sorrento, to uh, the plunge sprint in Sorrento. And I think it was in 2011 that I started uh, coding a, a microblog platform uh, within the microblog component uh, within Plone. And that was before Twitter became uh, the mess that it is today. It was still sexy at that stage. And I wanted to have something like Twitter in Plone, like an activity stream. Uh, something that is different from just content, which is documents. So something that really uh, affords uh, social interactions and, and quick uh, interactions. So I started building that and that got people interested. And uh, also I think a lot of that happened at Sorrento that we, you know, we started networking around that. And from that emerged the uh, Plone Internet Consortium uh, a few years later, where we had an alliance of, I think it was nine Plone companies, where we said, let's, let's you know, work together and take like the best internet components that everyone has and fuse them into a single product suite on top of Plone. Uh, so that became Plone Internet and that later evolved into Quave uh, with the addition of branding and like keeping it develop keep developing it all the time. Cool. And and that's just kind of continued that that same consortium with keep members leaving and coming, etc. <clears throat> it's it's a much tougher market than, than I, I anticipated for sure, personally. So the lead times in the business are really long. Um, so we saw uh, most partners actually drop, dropping off. Like, you know, a lot of people mm. invested in that product, but they weren't able to, to uh, bring it to market successfully. So in the end, uh, it's mainly Syslab that is uh, pushing the solution that my company co-sent. So together we're still uh, carrying uh, uh, Quay forward. And that's that's going well, but you know it's a pity that that not more companies uh, you know are still involved in that. Right, right, right. And and so what are you uh, folks doing with Quave now? That's a lot. So I, I'm not closely involved in in Syslab's clients. I know they're working for several universities. They have some industrial clients, uh, and we also have a number of NGOs and and public sector uh, clients. And I'm both. Personally, like in my company, I'm working with uh, with uh, public sector mainly currently. So that's an agency in, in the Netherlands that is uh, active in the healthcare uh, sector. And in Belgium, I'm working with a, uh, a Belgian uh, service provider to uh, public sector bodies, basically. And then we just got approached by the Plon uh, Foundation, actually, uh, to uh, to support, uh, to provide a supported quave installation for the, uh, the Plon uh, Foundation. Oh, right. And, uh, yeah, and then run that. So that's that's being prepared right now. It's not live yet, but that, that will come this year. Cool. Uh, you mentioned um, having a number of clients in the public sector. Are there yeah. particular benefits to using Quave in the public se sector? I think that, yeah, the main, th those apply for all open source deployments, I guess, which is you get longevity. Whatever happens to your supplier, you can actually take uh, control of that deployment by yourself. So you know that, that there's like you, have, you almost have a viable exit strategy with open source. Uh, on the plus side, it's cost effective typically. And we also see like a cultural match, uh, certainly in Belgium, with uh, the people there who are uh, used to working with open source. And for them, it's just a no brainer to do this uh, with Quave uh, because it just fits their, their existing knowledge, it fits their infrastructure, it fits how they do things. Is, and is, do I remember right that Plone is, is used in a number of 
uh, cities, small cities and towns in, in Belgium, or is, am I mixing that up? Yeah, no, that, that's actually, that's my main focus uh, nowadays. It's working with Emil, which is uh, sort of like a, a shared service center for uh, Belgium, French-speaking Belgian government agencies. Yeah, municipalities mostly, but they also work with all other types of agencies. And they have a, a product portfolio that they make available, which is all plone based or mostly plone based They also have some Odoo uh, applications. So they have a whole uh, suite of applications that they make available on a SaaS basis for their clients. And I'm now, I've, I have been working with them and I'm, I'm working intensely with them to uh, bring Quave to all of their clients. So Quave is, uh, is now part of their product portfolio and uh, municipalities can subscribe to Quave and you know, get a role out of Quave uh, there. Cool. So that, that's, that's quite exciting to, uh, to do that, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and the municipalities are using it essentially for government functions like posting, meeting information and law, laws and notices and that kind of thing. Is that gen generally what Plone is used for in those governments? It's more traditional. And though most uh, municipalities, they use it for document repository, like uh, oh, okay. for human resource management, like, you know, what's your holiday uh, allowance typically. And uh, so, so a lot of reference uh, uh, I see, I see. documentation. And also they are trying, you know, so Quave is, is designed to support a shift to a more bottom-up organization. And they're consciously using it as that as well. So they, 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 they get Quave because it then enables the employees to, to talk more horizontally amongst themselves. And for them, it then fits within the wider product portfolio where Emio has, they have their own meeting product, for example, where they do all the actual meeting notes. So those, those are outside of Quave. And right. we're going to use Quave also as a portal, like as the central hub to access all those other applications. So it's going to be like your entry point into hmm. the whole network of applications. So I hope we'll get a lot of traffic and a lot of visibility in that way as well. Cool, cool. Yeah. You, you, you mentioned open as being a part of this. Um, is, that, is there that sort of a cultural fit for specialty or is it more a cost benefit analysis kind of thing? Why is open source, uh, the open source model particularly uh, useful in the in this community of clients. Well, for Emu, they are a plone shop. Basically, they have a lot of plone expertise. So for them, it just makes a lot of sense uh, to do it like that. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I, I often feel like there are certain sectors that the open source model really appeals to, like education and government. So that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, and for them, it's like so. So culturally, these are these are uh, people and organizations who are used to like co-investing. So the whole premise of of Emio itself is like let's let's get together and you know fund open source applications for you know for the public good. So yeah, that you, you can share you can share the costs across uh, multiple municipalities and and you get the benefits of having a you know well designed, well run application. Right. And that applies right. to Quave as well in this context. So so for them, it's natural. They're not they're not competing against each other. So they can easily right, right, see, right. like, okay, if we pull the money, like, like, we're all going to be richer in a way. <laughs> right, and right. That's, yeah, that's how it works. So it's really a public good uh, situation. And is that community of of uh, municipalities? Is that the, sort of the portfolio of of products that you mentioned? Is that called Communes Plone, or or is that something of the past? I remember that name. The name rings a bell, but I don't remember the context. So that's yeah. something different. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I guess it yeah, was. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and I was not involved like in the old uh, Plone Golf uh, initiative, so maybe right, that right. has to do with that. Yeah. Yeah, it might. It might. Yeah. Plone has a long history for sure. Yes, <laughs> yes, we all do by now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned that you've been active now with uh, with these new clients and new heightened interest in Quave. So yeah. tell us a little bit about the new features that you've been working on, uh, what you've been doing, to, what you've been adding to Quave recently. Yeah, so some of the stuff actually, so what I, what I did for Emio, a lot of that is not even visible to end users, which is maybe not that sexy, but you know, for plumbing people, it might be interesting to uh, to hear about that. Because like we're, we're, we've built a completely dockerized uh, Quave DevOps pipeline. So that we can run Quave in a Docker-based environment uh, for Emu, uh, which doesn't sound very sexy, but was was a lot of work to make that work. <laughs> and in terms of user-facing features, yeah, I just look at our uh, release log, and 
it's you know, there's a lot going on, but it's difficult to to capture that in a sexy headline. Well, the the, the one thing that that jumps out is that we've been working on a new notification system within Quake, uh, so that if something happens that you are interested in, or, or you know, we expect that you are interested in, you you can subscribe to that, and you you will get notifications via email, but also via push messages or like in the browser if you are looking at Quake. So that makes it easier for people to keep track uh, of Quave. And it also is useful in situations where, uh, so if it's your internet, it's basically your homepage if you come in. Uh. But Quave also typically fits in a situation where it's between organizations, where it's like a sharing platform between other organizations. And in that case, as an employee, it's not your natural homepage. It's not something you easily go to. Right. And in those scenarios, email is really valuable in getting you notified like, hey, something interesting is going on in the Quave installation that you're a member of. Go over and have a look at what's going on there. So that, that, increases, uh, that increases a lot of uh, visibility as well and, and usage of Quave. Nice. So I think nice. that that's the, And other than that, we're, we're constantly working on, on tuning features and, and you know, expanding little, little nooks and polishing the, the stuff all over the place. You know, when I started, I never thought it would, like, it never ends. <laughs> you know, you'd think at some stage the product is finished, but you know, the, back, the backlog just keeps, you know, it just keeps giving. It's, uh, yeah. Expectations continue to. Yeah, yeah. Change, there's, change, always, there's always interesting stuff to do and, and stuff that needs doing to make clients happy. Yeah, yeah. Well, great. Um, any final parting words you want to leave with folks to pique their interest in Quave or... or uh, or anything at all <laughs> well I would, I would actually say like i saw a a, a poll on macedon the other day where people are asking like what are interesting communities that you've been a member of and i would say like plone rocks <laughs> uh, the community i mean the product as well but you know the community is just uh, is superb and that that would be my parting words like plone rocks yep for sure and all mm -hmm. all folks listening to this should definitely get involved and consider coming to the upcoming conference, which is yes, going to be- Yes, see you all, see you all in Boston. We, yeah. I know, so awesome that we'll be able to, well, for me, I didn't go last year and this will be my yeah, first. Yeah, me neither, yeah. Many yeah, so years. We'll, it will be mine again as well yeah. uh, after yeah. many years. So it's we'll going to be great to, to meet everybody, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, great, well, thank you so much for sharing the Quave news and uh, that's it for our World, World Plum Day session. Thanks everyone. Th thank you for having me and great, have a great uh, World Plum Day. <laughs>